Nigeria, I just have to say this to prepare your mind. We are expecting economic uh, turnaround. Let me say this. In the next three years, don't expect that. The next three years, there will be famine in the land. Of serious famine. Like in the days of Joseph in Egypt. In fact, it will get to a point where I saw protests. People protesting from Lagos, Abuja, Otak, different parts of the country. I saw it. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. Yes, I saw it. And I can boldly say that. There is light at the end of the tunnel. So it's, it's not the end. It's not the end. And because of hunger, there's absolute hunger. And you say we should not say we are hungry. So should we keep quiet and die? The answer is no. So that's why we are coming out. Here. Please! Make things easier for workers. Yes, sir. We cannot condone it anymore. Yes. And that is why today, the next session decided that 27th and 28th of this month, that is today and tomorrow, has been set aside for workers of Nigeria to protest against this un 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 unbearable hardship in the nation. Do you want to kill us? Are you the first person to govern? We can't go to school. We can't pay our transport fares. We are hungry. We are angry. Look at us now. There is nothing. We are starving. Chinubu should please do so. This is his promise. He promised to do better. Look at us now. Nigerians have directed their anger at the government and are blaming President Bola Tinubu for failing to deliver on his campaign pledges. The harsh economic realities across Nigeria has led to protests in parts of the country to register the grievances of Nigerians who are struggling to survive. <laughs> Latest entrants in this set of protests are residents of the Badajoyo state capital. <laughs> Similar protests held at Songo and Iworod areas within the Badodio state capital. They hope that the government would consider this protest and do something to reduce the suffering. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. Yes, I saw it. And I can boldly say that. There is light at the end of the tunnel so it's, it's not the end it's not the end god is still speaking today i saw somewhere that looks like a game reserve where those animals are all right that caught fire in australia caught fire and i saw animals literally burnt unexpected fire this looks like volcanic eruption, but this is fire. The whole, you know, land consumed by fire. Thousands of firefighters and nearly 70 water bombing aircraft are on high alert as Victoria braces for catastrophic fire conditions. Cassie Zervos is in the state's west, which is expecting high winds, lightning and searing temperatures. As the Bandine bushfire northwest of Ballarat continues to rage out of control, an evacuation zone has been set up from Eversley to Clunes and a text message sent to 30,000 residents ordering them to leave tonight or before midday tomorrow. This is all about saving lives. The fire has already destroyed six homes and dozens of sheds. Aged care facilities and the local prison evacuated as the threat looms. All the smokes appeared unsettling. It's all hands on deck with a base camp in Ballarat set up for emergency services. There are condolences to every affected family and we pray that this raging disaster be put to an end in Jesus' name. God is still speaking today. I saw somewhere that looks like a game reserve where those animals are, all right, that caught fire in Australia. Caught fire. And I saw animals literally burnt. Unexpected fire. This looks like volcanic eruption. 
but this is fire the whole you know land consumed by fire thousands of firefighters and nearly 70 water bombing aircraft are on high alert as victoria braces for catastrophic fire conditions cassie zervos is in the state's west which is expecting high winds lightning and searing temperatures as the bandeen bushfire northwest of ballarat continues to rage out of control an evacuation zone has been set up from eversley to clunes and a text message sent to 30,000 residents ordering them to leave tonight or before midday tomorrow. This is all about saving lives. The fire has already destroyed six homes and dozens of sheds. Aged care facilities and the local prison evacuated as the... Just be the Come on up. Ah, yeah. You are red, red. You are God. Woman, fine. Uh -huh. You are not just like you. You are red, red. You are big, big. Big, 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 big. You are I love 
For the rest of eternity My daddy, my daddy Your baby is singing I will be singing and dancing and shouting For the rest of eternity My daddy, my daddy The rest of eternity. Hallelujah! Somebody, let me feel jump up there for Jesus. Come on now, come on now, come on now, come on now. Somebody, give the Lord a chill. Oh, 
Samuwa. Somebody come on, let for Jesus.
Ipo kwenu Ipo kwenu Are you ready? Come on now Onye nye me mane bi Oye nala Chile pe Come on nye me Aya Come on now Oye to see ya Come on 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 now Father, we thank you for the year 2024. 
Thank you for bringing us into this season of bounty and splendor. We declare that according to the word of prophecy, throughout this year and beyond, we experience unusual dimensions of wealth and riches. Doors of favor and abundance are swung open unto us. We declare that as a people and as a ministry, we experience daily help. A minimum of one help per day. In the name of Jesus, we declare that the Lord has made all grace abound towards us. Therefore, we always have in abundance to give. We declare that this is the year, not next year. We declare that this is the year that the blessings of God becomes apparent in our lives. In the name of Jesus, we declare that we move from the realm of just enough to having more than enough. Thank you, Father, because in 2024 and beyond, we will be big in millions and we shall never be small. In Jesus' name we have declared. joy give jesus a shout of praise hallelujah i need you to turn to one or two persons and tell them happy easter happy easter you're welcome to church happy easter it's good to see you you look good you look beautiful happy easter give jesus a shout he's the reason why we are here today he's alive rejoice in the holy ghost from verse 1 I read to the end Matthew 28 from verse 1 to 20 in the end of the Sabbath as it, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week came Mary Magdalene and other Mary to see the sepulchre and behold there was a great earthquake for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake, and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not, yea, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here for his reason. As he said, Come, see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy. And did run to bring his disciples' word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. Now when they were going, behold, some of the watch came into the city and showed unto the chief priest all the things that were done. And when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers, saying, Say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. And if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure you. So they took the money and did as they were taught. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jew until this day. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted, 
And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Say, he is with me always. Jesus is with me always. The reason why we are gathered this morning or the reason for this ceremony or this celebration all over the world is because Jesus is alive. The only grave that is empty is the grave of Jesus. He's alive. He died. He rose. He's alive. And he's with us. Like he promised, he's always with us. Yeah, whether you go through challenges, tribulations, whatsoever, he's with you. Hallelujah. This morning we will lift up our voice and we will give him thanks. Because he's, the stone has been rolled away. We are no longer behind the stone. When he came out of the grave, we came out with him as well. When he came out of the grave, we are no longer tied down. The graves are open. Yes, hallelujah. And we are alive in him. Because he lives, we are alive. Because he lives, we live. Can you lift up your voice this morning as you begin to appreciate God? This is the assurance that we have. This is the assurance that we have. He is alive. The stone has been rolled away. The stone has been rolled away. We are a witness that he is alive. Yes, to him that believes. We are a witness. We, can, we have the witness in our spirit. We have the witness in our spirit. We have the witness in our spirit. He's alive. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Because he lives. Yes, we are here today. Because he lives. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the sacrifice on the cross. Thank you, Jesus, for the pain. Thank you for shedding your blood. We are alive today because you live. Oh, hallelujah. While he was crucified, we were crucified with him. Yes, he died, we died. And he rose, we rose along with him. Hallelujah. Scripture says we are seated with him in heavenly places. Far above principalities of power. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. You are holy. And forever you are God. We bless you, Lord. You are holy. And forever you are God. We bless you, Father. You are holy.
Blessed be to your holy name, dear Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. The Lord says that is your week of favor. Amen. That is somebody's season of favor. Amen. I don't know who I'm talking to, and I don't know who I'm talking about here, but I declare God's counsel as I heard him from heaven. God says to tell someone under the sound of my voice this morning that it's your week of favor. Amen. Can you help me with that sound? I don't like what I'm hearing. It is your season of favor. Amen. It is your week of favor. Amen. It is your season of favor. Amen. It is your season of favor. Amen. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There are some of you that have submitted proposals, applications. Some of you interviews have been conducted. Interviews upon interviews and you are, your hearts are open, you are expectant. The Lord says to tell you that this is your season. This is your time. This is your season. This is your time. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 
Lift your hands to heaven. Someone now. Go ahead, pray in the Holy Ghost. Go ahead, pray in the Holy Ghost if you can. Go ahead, pray in the Holy Ghost. Go ahead, just go ahead. Just go ahead. Keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. Jila mana mana magada bai yele gada bo jada bai yada bai yela. He ma 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 na 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 ni kiti banda la bai yada bo si yele ora bara bara do. He ma 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 na 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 ne ya na 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 ne ke le 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 li ya na ma na ma di ya le le li ya la ba na gada bo si yele bo da da di ya da 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 da. Heli bande zabaya da baro do zabaya de. Hane ne ni 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 ka di li 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 ka li ya da bara da da. Hele le 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 ki li la lo ze le ba di la la ba ga. Hamana manye li ele gade gada gada gado jede de 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 di ya la 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 la. Hamana mana 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 gada bara do jede le gade gade gadi ya la ba ra de le fene le ge 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 gaga. Jili li ki bani ni ni na na ni kiti kiti alaba le keki kalaba ne alaba alaba to. Jara na 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 Ye ki 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 manana ne hile leli na magadeza heli barande fili li ki ki kakodo shina na ne ni na na keli ya deza na ne de de ha na 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 ha ba la ba na ma 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 na Eki ki eni ala sandeli lagada bade. Shiri ni 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 ala dado. Amane ni 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 ki 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 ala moti ni gidi bana. Shara na do. Shakrande Barati. Eli mana 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 he mana 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 ne, he ki ki kamba la badosh, fe de 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 di ana mana ne, zakolo ba ya na badabana, ine ne ni na ni ane da, ji di 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 da, he ki alo di de gaga. He mama ne ki ego giga Shandele li ki 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 mana ne li alabadi Shi alabada mana 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 gadabadi gadabodo no 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 de Hendela handela handela 
Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus. There is someone under the sound of my voice right now, right now, right now as I'm speaking. You've been finding it difficult to breathe. You've been finding it difficult to breathe. I mean, it was as though your chest and your lungs are very tight. They are tightening together. It's not because you have cold, not because you have um, um, cataract, but I, the, the all of your chest down to your lung region have been very tight, and so you struggle with your breath. But by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, from the crown of your head to the toe of your feet right now, I declare the healing power of God to rest upon you. I declare the healing power of God to rest upon you right now. And I, I decree and declare free flow of breath. Free flow of breath. Free flow of breath. In the name of Jesus. Every obstruction in that lungs. Every heaviness in that chest. By the power in the name of Jesus, I command it to check out right now. I command it to check out right now. I command it to check out right now. In the name of Jesus. That there is somebody here from your neck region down to your waist region. This is your spinal cord. I've been giving you a very tough time very difficult time in such a way that the pain is always excruciating the pain is always excruciating and as a result of that you find it difficult to walk for so long and also difficult to stand for a very long time but because you are under the sound of my voice right now you have been implicated for the healing anointing so by the anointing of the holy ghost I command that spinal cord to be straightened. Every abnormality in that spinal cord, I command it to check out right now. I command it to check out right now. I command it to check out right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Shoulder pain is just being healed right now. Whatever you find difficult to do with that shoulder, go ahead and do it right now. Jesus has just healed you permanently. In the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. In case you are here, you desire the healing touch of Jesus in any aspect of your life, lay your hand there right now. The healing anointing is in the house because the angels of God are in this house. Alright? And the angels that are here right now are the angels of the supernatural healings. So by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, by the authority in the name of Jesus, right now, I address that infirmity. Alright? Those of you watching online too, you can do the same. Connect. All right, the same grace, the same anointing, the same thing that is happening here is what is being extended to you, wherever you are, you can see me from. By the authority in the name of Jesus, from the crown of your head to the toe of your feet, I command that foul devil to check out of your body now. Every spirit of infirmity, every foul demon of headache, every foul demon demon of ulcer every foul demon of asthma every foul demon katima efeli parato simana nakia barate of internal injury internal injury internal injury by the authority in the name of jesus i address you right now and i command you to come out I command you to come out. 
I command you to come out in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every blood diseases, blood disease, blood infirmity, by the authority in the name of Jesus, I command you to be flushed away now. Be flushed out right now. Be flushed out right now. Whatever reports that you have received from medical personnel by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, I turn that report negative now. I turn it negative now. In the mighty name of Jesus, I command that high condition to be healed right now. High condition be healed now. Ear condition be healed right now. In the name of Jesus. Teeth condition be healed now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, pain in the stomach. In the lower abdominal region. I exercise authority over you now. By the resurrected power of God. I command you to come out in the name of Jesus. I declare restoration of wholeness to your body. Restoration of wholeness to your body. Restoration of wholeness to your body. Restoration of wholeness to your body now. No more pain. No more affliction. In the name of Jesus. If you couldn't see with one eye. Alright. Clearly. Now open that eye right now. Open it right now. You'll see that you can now see clearer. Go ahead and open it now. Go ahead and open it. Open it. Jesus has healed you. He has set you free. So therefore. That migraine is gone. It is gone. It is gone. It is gone. It is gone. There is even a woman here. It's always as though somebody is putting load on your head. That is how your head is always banging. As if someone has put a load on your head. Your head is always... It was a demonic oppression. But because you are under the sound of my voice this morning, you are free now. You are free right now. Go ahead and shake that head. You are free right now. Go ahead and shake that head. I say you are free right now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Are you healed? Do you believe that you are healed? Lift your hands to heaven. Begin to celebrate Jesus. Lift your hands to heaven. Lift your hands to heaven as you celebrate the Lord. Rejoice in him. Rejoice, 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 rejoice. 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 Shimana mane le mananozo. Emana nani nani kala baratoto. Viki di bagada bayala bagada baratosh. Shanda barate. Efele barato. Leki kamba na marate. Rejoice. Whosoever the son has set free is free indeed. Rejoice for your freedom. Rejoice for your healing. Rejoice for your testimony. Give him praise. Give him glory. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we give you praise. 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 I'm 
Fini I'm free indeed. I'm free indeed. Oh, it's who I choose. I'm free indeed. Oh. In Christ, I'm free. It's who I choose. I'm free indeed. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you. If you came here with any sickness, any pain in your body, and you can't feel it anymore, can I see your hands up? Wow, glory. Can we celebrate Jesus for that? Oh, wow. Celebrate Jesus for them. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus for them. You can't feel the pain anymore. Right? Please come, sir. Please come. We'd like to take your testimony. Please come, sir. Wow. Can we celebrate Jesus for them? Celebrate Jesus! Yes! It's a resurrection morning! Before, I did feel chest pain every time. But as a father play now, I'm free from my chest. Wow! Can we celebrate Jesus? Have you heard the word of knowledge? Chest pain in the name of Jesus. That pain, that affliction will never return. Amen. It go back to hell where it came from. Amen. And your healing is established in the name of Jesus. Amen. Can we celebrate Jesus for that miracle? Don't get used to the miraculous in the house. Celebrate Jesus. Uh, yes, I used to usually have uh, body internal pain and disturbance. I don't know if it is... Body internal pain? Yes. Oh, all right. Uh, so I don't know if it is spiritually, but as you... How long, how long has, have you been feeling that, sir? It's, it's been almost two Two three years now. Two to three years yes. of body internal pain. Wow. How do you feel now, sir? Yes, now I feel better. Because I feel yes. as I pray for you, right? Father, we thank you. In the name of Jesus, by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Lift your hands. Lift your hands, sir. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. That's pain. Return back to hell where it came from. That arrow in your body. Yes. Jesus. 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 Yes. Breathe in, sir. Breathe in. Out. Breathe in again. Out. Breathe in again. Keep doing it. Out. Breathe in again. For the third time. Out. Can you feel it again? It is gone. Yes. Can you celebrate Jesus? Yes. Celebrate Jesus! Yes. yes! You are exalted. Unlimited God. You are exalted. Unlimited God. Oh, 
you know, something happened Why, on my way to on my way to the southwest on Wednesday, right? I told my I shared with my wife, you know. There is this young man inside the vehicle that was very violent. He was so violent. It was right from the beginning of the journey. He was just shouting on the the driver. Do you understand? Why are you drive match this thing now? Do you know all those kind of stuff now? Uh, and the driver calmly, and at the end of the day, the matter was settled. Ah, who is this guy? He smoked. Any small thing. So we got somewhere and the vehicle got stuck. And he's the one who walked up to me and initiated the conversation. I knew the Holy Ghost heard that his step. He initiated the conversation. I was sitting in front, so he walked up to me, initiated the conversation, and we got talking. He said, I know you. I said, Really? He said, Yeah. Did you school in Abuja? I said, Yes. And where will you? Say? Oh, he now ended up to be that. His elder brother and myself attended the same secondary school in Abuja here. Do you understand? So, two of his elder brothers. He's a married man who is not that young. <laughs> So when I say his elder brother, you might be thinking that maybe he's a very young, he's married with children, all right? Has a good job, has a very good job, very decent job that he does. And so we got talking, and he asked a question. He said, nobody has been able to answer this question. He said, even he had met with the Jehovah Witnesses, he asked them the same questions, they always shy away from the answer. They have met different pastors, Asking the same questions. That is why we are in the dispensation of knowledge. Yes, Don't joke with the knowledge of Christ as a believer. There are certain people who have questions in their heart that it is the answer that you give to them that will make them to embrace Christ. Don't joke with your Bible. How can you be a, a believer? You don't read your you only you only open your Bible every Sundays. You are not serious. If that is how you've been living your life, you don't have a walk with God. And so, he asked me, there was another pastor there of a very prominent church. But um, I will not mention the name of the church. <laughs> so he asked me the question. Sir, he said, Cain, the Bible said, Adam was the first man that was created, right? And then Eve. And Adam went ahead to give back to Cain and Abel. But after when Cain killed the brother, all right, the Bible says he got married and had his own children. Where did he get the wife that he got married? Then I began to expand scriptures to him. After expanding the scriptures, even the, the man of God that was beside me was, he said, you have a theological knowledge, right? This is theology. I was just laughing. <laughs> so after expanding scriptures, and I turned to him, I said, would you love to not serve that same Jesus now? He said, yes. He said, but the only challenge I have is this cigarette. I said, oh, cigarette. I will pray for you. And that addiction will die on the spot. It will die on the spot. Do you, if you want to accept Jesus, I'll lead you to Christ and I'll pray for you. And the addiction will die. Your appetite for cigarettes, for smoke, it will die on the spot. And I knew what I was in. I knew that that was what will happen. Power is not to be demonstrated on the pulpit alone. Yes, sir. Jesus went about doing good, yes. healing those that were oppressed of the, on the streets. There was nobody who ever met him. Are you getting my point? Whoever met a man whose life ever remained the same. So you can't say you're a prophet and you only prophesy whenever you're on the pulpit. Or you, are, you, are, uh, you have healing anointing and you only heal the sick each time you stand before God's people. No. It is everywhere. If you truly have it all, everywhere you demonstrate the power. So God him saved instantly and ministered to him. He said, you see now, till we got to where we were going, not one single stick, not one, not one, 
we got down and he said, wow. I would like to have, the other man of God said, let me have your number. He collected my number. <laughs> Were you not the one who came here, right? Eh? The day you came, what did you say happened to you? <laughs> After hearing the word of God, I left. You said the same Ogogoro, right? Yeah, yeah, that yeah. you used to drink. What yes. happened? I don't stop it now. You stop it now, yes. permanently. He said, since I came here, he said, from that first day, I step out of here. He said, I don't know what, what happened to my system. He said, they brought the same Ogogoro, you know him with and his guys and all of that. They brought, he said, he started vomiting. He said, he just started vomiting. He was vomiting. He said, what is going on here? They said, I take one shot now. What did they happen? He said, no, 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 no. Now he's irritated. The same thing that he used to take with joy, with excitement, is now irritating him. He's now irritating him. We've experienced such testimonies over and over again. And in case there is someone under the sound of my voice this morning, right now, who is suffering from one addiction or the other, the same power of the Holy Ghost that is setting people free from all kinds of addiction. I command that same power to set you free right now. I declare be free now. I declare be free now. I declare be free now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your hands to heaven. Father, we are grateful. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Welcome your neighbor. Welcome them. Say happy Easter. Welcome the church. Welcome them to church. Welcome someone to church. Glory, 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 glory. Glory. Welcome your neighbor. Huh? Are you fighting? You are the great and mighty God. So greatly to be praised. Beautiful in all situations. You are the joy of the world. You are the great and the mighty God. So greatly to be praised. Beautiful in all situations. You are the joy of the whole world. Helema, 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 Helema. Elema, Alleluia, 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 Father, we are grateful to you. We we'll give you all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name we we'll pray. Amen. Can I be seated this morning? John chapter 15. John chapter 15. Uh, from verse 1. John chapter 15 from verse 1. Hemanama siprone paratos. Um, I'll be teaching us this morning briefly, just briefly, the seed of manifestations. The seed of manifestation Jesus rose on a Sunday morning and that day eventually became the day that we celebrate and commemorate every year do you understand I am the true vine and my father is the husband man Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, 
he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it that it may bring forth more fruit. So, there is the husband man who is called his father. This is Jesus speaking here. He said, he is the vine. And then, there is what is called the branch. Then the fruit. The husband man is the farmer. He's the one who cultivates the what? The plant. Do you understand? He cultivates the soil. He puts in the seed. He determines the seed. It determines the quality and the quantity of the seed that will go into the soil. He also determines the outcome of the seed. Most times he does. Especially if the seed is all right, um, in alignment with the, uh, with the husband's man's growth procedures. What I mean by growth procedures, you know, after planting the seed, you water it, right? Sometimes you put fertilizer. Are you getting my point? It is not every seed that responds to fertilizer. There are some that do not. And many would do. Do you understand? It is not every seed that responds to water. There are some that do not. But many will also do. Are you getting my point? So, Jesus is now giving an illustration here. He said, my father is the husband man. That is, he's the farmer. I am the branch. Which means, before he could become the branch, a seed must have gone, must have gone to the ground. So, it was the seed that undergone the process of fertilization, all right? Then, before he started having what? A eh? vine. To a point where he now started having branches. Are you getting my point now? So he said, every branch in me, in other words, the branch is expected to be connected to the vine. The branch is expected to be connected to the vine. He said, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, what is the objective of the branch? The branch is the fruit producing part of the tree. There can be no fruit outside the branch. And there can be no branch outside the vine. And there is no vine without the husband man. And you see the interconnection now. There is no branch without the husband, the vine without the husband man. So the husband man all right, determines the vine. The vine gives back to the branch, okay? And the branch has only one major objective, which is what? To bear fruit. It says, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. What does he do with it? He take it away. So, in the midst of so many other what? Branches. And other trees and other plants, other crops. What the husband man does is that when he gets to all right, the, the, a, a particular crop and discover that that crop is not yielding much expected fruit, he take he remove it from the other word, crops. Because the assignment of the branch. Is to produce fruit. So a branch that is not bringing needed required fruit. Is not fulfilling his assignment. And so the husband man has no any other option. Than to do what? To take him away. Every believer has an assignment. He said, now, what is that? Can we take it back? Verse 2. He said, every branch in me that bear not fruit, he take it away. And every branch that bear it fruit, what does he do with it? Why does he purge it? Some of us, when, I remember when I was growing up, I lived with my grandparents. I think my grandmother will clock 100 years this year. 
She'll be 100 this year. So, I think I was having a conversation with my dad, and he said, they want to even see the way to mark, all right, the birthday, 100 years old. No walking stick. Eyes are not dim. Can see clearly. Can still walk normal, straight, not bent. 100. My dad was saying, one of his uncle clocked 84 recently. And grandma was telling him that, ah, they gave back to him in my hand. If I even back him. <laughs> my dad said, eh? Say yes, I back him. They gave back to me, to him in my hand. 84. And grandma said, I was the one who backed him, who put him behind. This is my back. And do you know the funniest thing? My grandmother also has an elder sister. Whom she said backed her when she too was born. So that one is 100 plus. <laughs> and they are all alive. Oh. With, with long life, you shall be satisfied. You, you don't understand the prayer. I say, you shall be satisfied with long life. Yeah. Yeah. See, every branch in me that bear not much fruit, take it away. But every branch that bear fruit, what does it do? He purges. So I grew up with them, I, and they were farmers. They were farmers. So. Hallelujah. Please, can you help me with another mic? Whenever we go to the, to the farm, change the battery. Whenever we go to the farm, what happened is that... Thank you, Jesus. Each time we go to the farm, we knew some mango tree that produce nice fruits, sumptuous fruits. How many of us grew up in the village? <laughs> you, you can relate to what I'm saying, right? Yes, sir. So you discover that such trees, even cashew, you know, those kind of stuffs, mango, orange, cashew, and the rest. You discover that such trees are the ones that suffer the most. Every now and then, you always climb them to pluck what? Trick because they have sumptuous fruit. Am I correct? And you, could, you could enter the farm and see all the oranges scattered everywhere. You, don't, you won't even touch it. Because you know that, that one, if you just, what, what is there? Nobody will touch. But the ones that produce sumptuous fruit, what happens? Eh? And so the farmer, the husband man, is going to take his time in order to ensure that that same tree produces more fruit. So he will spend more time with that one. The ones that are not producing much fruit, he will, you know, they are not yielding. So he abandons them. The fruits can be ripening. And they will drop on the ground and nothing. Birds of the air will come. Do you understand? They will eat them and then. So Jesus is not saying here that every branch that beareth fruit, what the farmer does, the husband man, who happened to be the father does, is that what? He purges it. Why? The objective is that it may bring forth more fruit. So anyone that is bring about the expectation of heaven on his life, all right, automatically command divine attention. So God will sit on him because he knows that this one is bringing required fruit. So I'm going to spend more time and more what? more energy, devote more energy with this one. Because the fruits that he's producing, that he's bringing out, are what have full fruits that are worthy of consumption. Marketable fruits. 
Because every farmer is an investor. Even God is also an investor. So whatever God has put in you is an investment of heaven on you. So which means, why he's doing all of that, okay, there is an expectation from him towards you. And what expectation? That you may bear fruit. Not just anyhow kind of fruit. Fruit that can be consumed. Fruit that is marketable. Psalms 40 and in verse 7. Psalms 40 and in verse 7. I'm heading somewhere this morning. Then we are going to pray. Psalm 40 verse 7. Hmm. This is Jesus praying here. But David being a prophet, he could see into the archives of heaven. And so as a result of that, he was able to experience certain messianic what, revelations and visions. So he gave messianic prophecies. The book of Psalm is one of the most spiritual books, the most, the most spiritual books in the entire Bible. The book of Psalms are very rich, contain biblical truth, concerning warfare, spiritual warfare, right? I read the biography of a great servant of God, Apostle Joseph Babalola, of Christ Apostolic Church. How many of you knew the man? All right. I heard that one of the strengths of Babalola is the fact that he could quote verbatim Psalm 1 to, one, to Psalm 150 of heart. In other words, from Psalm 1 to so the last Psalm, he can read, he can recite all of them. And that is how he recites them in, in prayers. So Babala will be shouting. They, they said he doesn't pray all those kind of quiet prayers. That wherever he is, eh, you will always hear his voice in the night. 12 a.m., Till dawn, it is till dawn. Prayers, and he will be shouting on top of his voice, reciting the books of Psalms from Psalm 1. And he will be reciting the books of Psalms. Very dangerous man, dangerous, extremely dangerous apostle. Such a man that will step all right into the market square and see a mad person. And say, whether you believe it or not, be healed. Yes. You don't need to believe. Say, whether you believe it or not, be healed. And the person will be healed. You know now, some of us, we have to teach you, then bring you to a place of faith. Are you getting my point? Then before we now minister healing to you. No. No. It's anointing. It's anointing. So Jesus now, all right, said, then said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me. I think in the book of Hebrews, Paul the Apostle also made mention. He went ahead to quote this scripture while he was talking about Jesus. All right, and he said, He said, Lo, I have come to you in the volume of the book as it is written of me. To do thy will, O God. Where is the will that he wanted to do? The will is enwrapped in the book. Oh, you know, sometimes when we see and hear that Jesus fulfills certain prophecies, what quickly comes to our mind is that, oh, uh, it's because he's Jesus now. It's because he's Jesus now. So he knew all the scriptures. No! It wasn't the fact that he knew all the scriptures, all right? But there were certain things that he did that made him to search out what is that which is written concerning him in the scripture to a point where he could fulfill them in verbatim. So, in other words, there is a place of work. He said, "No, I then said I, 
Lo, this is Jesus speaking here. I come in the volume of the book that is written of me to do thy will, O God. So the will of God is enwrapped in the volume of the book. And as it was for Jesus, all right, is the same way it is concerning you and I in Christ. Luke 24, verse 13 to 27. You know, I, I started by saying, by talking about the fruit, right? Are you correct? No. Have I talked about the seed? No. That same day, two of them, this was after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. He has been killed. And then certain people... The Bible says we were walking to the village, Emmaus, about seven miles out of Jerusalem. So Emmaus is about seven miles out of Jerusalem. Now, can we read it further? They were deep in conversation, going over all these things that had happened. They were talking about how Jesus was killed. That was their conversation. And the Bible said they were already deep in that conversation, going through all that had happened. The Romans, how they killed him, how he was, do you understand? I remember that as soon as he was hung on that cross and he screamed, the Bible said there was a thunder. And there was darkness all over Jerusalem. Do you understand? Darkness all over Jerusalem. And then the temple, the veil of the temple torn from head to toe. And so they, these guys were recounting all these things that had happened. And they were discussing and talking about it. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. Now he had resurrected. And, but their eyes were holding that they should not know him. So, <laughs> the one who was crucified in their presence, now they are face to face with him. But they couldn't see him. They couldn't know him. They were not aware that he's the one that, who had been what that who was crucified. That they were even talking about. Now, let's now see. And he said unto them, what manner of conversations or communications are these that he have one to another as he walk and are sad. They were sad. And the one of them whose name was Cleopas answering said unto him, are thou only a stranger in Jerusalem and has not known the things which have come to pass there in these days? Now, and he said unto them, what things? And they said unto him, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people. Some of us, especially in this generation, we are only mighty in words. We are not mighty in deed. We are mighty in grammar, but not mighty in deed. You know, somebody can come up now and share some testimonies of things that never happened, that never existed before. And everybody in the house will believe this is a mighty man of God. Now bring someone who has a deck. He won't be able to heal the person. And he just share a testimony of how he raised the dead. He just shared a testimony of what happened. How he, 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 you know, he prayed for the cripple and the cripple walked. That's how you know that that was a lie. I, someone said to me that they've been hearing about a certain young, a certain man of God, prophet. That this guy, wow, because of the testimonies that he shared, whenever he is ministering, that's why don't be carried away by what you hear on social media. Some of the things you hear are lies. So they now invited him all the way for a mega conference. Did he this prophetic encounter? <laughs> so my guy came. So it was a friend I was sharing with me. He said, we regretted bringing that guy. We regretted. We regretted. Not even one door said the law to one person. Not one. Not one. For three days. It was just stories upon stories upon stories. He said, ah, what? What? He said, what? <laughs> but the Bible says 
it concerning Jesus that he was mighty in deed and word. Jesus himself said, if you don't believe me for what I am saying to you, believe me for the very work's sake. So if you can call me fake, all right, because of what I'm saying, or you call what I'm saying doctrinally, that what I'm saying doctrinally is, uh, is false. Do you understand? Then believe me for the very work's sake. You see the blind eye open, the lame walk, right? You see all manner of mighty manifestations of the, of the spirit, then believe me for that sake. Because Jesus was mighty in word and in deed. In deed and word. Before God and all the people. Now, can we take it further? And how the chief priests and our rulers deliver him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. <laughs> but we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. So in other words, those guys actually believed in Jesus. That was why they were sad. That how could they have killed such a good man? Such a promising man. All right? Who had come to redeem Israel? He said, and beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. <laughs> yeah, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulchre. So they were talking about Martha. Mary. Mary Magdalene, right? Remember? That was the first person that saw Jesus. Do you understand? That one is, an, is a talk for another day. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels which said that he was alive. Can we read it further? Can we read it further? And certain of them which were with us, went to the sepulchre and found it even so as the woman had said, but him they saw not. <laughs> the only empty grave all over the world is the grave of Jesus. The grave of Mohammed is still in Saudi Arabia. The grave of Buddha is still in India. Are you getting my point? All the founders of other religion, the founder of a kanka is dead, buried, rotten. The only empty grave all over the world is the grave of Jesus. It's the grave of Jesus. A lot of people have tried to explain these things away. In fact, in Islam, <laughs> we were taught, we were taught when I was there, we were taught that you know, Jesus did not die. That in fact, it was not even crucified, that he, he ascended to heaven. That it was Peter that was killed. Because Peter looked like Jesus. That so, when the Roman soldiers wanted to arrest him, then they arrested Peter instead. You see, fallacy, you see, lie, right? That they arrested Peter instead. And that Jesus disappeared, he ascended to heaven. That, but he will still come back, oh, because they believe that Jesus will come back. So, he's going to come back. That why he's going to come back? To fight and also to die like every other person. I said, ah. So when I became born again, I said, ah, that was a lie. That was a lie. He said, they, but in him they saw not. They can't. Now, let's let take it further. He said, then he said unto them, Oh fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophet have spoken. Hey. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? He entered into his glory. For me to enter into his glory, he suffered so that I do not suffer. He said, Ought Christ ought to have do, do, suffered these things and to enter into his glory? Now, take it further. He said, I'm beginning at Moses and all the prophets. He expounded unto them in all the scriptures. Somebody say, in all the scriptures. The things concerning himself. What is the subject of the entire scriptures? Jesus Christ. Jesus is the subject of, of the Bible. Eh? 
your family strong man is not the subject of the Bible. <laughs> you know, there are places that you go that from January to December, there is no one single teaching about Jesus. You can't find it anywhere. It's always about eh, strong man, strong, and they will be digging these things from the scripture. Can I say this to you? This is the subject of the Bible. So he himself began to expand unto them, all right, in all the scriptures, the things concerning what? Concerning who? Himself. All the scriptures, the law and the prophets concerning Jesus. It's all about Jesus. So when you read Genesis, you see Jesus. When you read Exodus, you see Jesus. When you read Deuteronomy, you see Jesus. When you read Numbers, you see Jesus. When you read Leviticus, you see Jesus there. Alright? When the Bible talks about the Ark of the Covenant, when the explanation of the Ark of the Covenant from head to toe is Jesus. When God was giving Moses the description of the temple, all right, and the things that, you know, he, he was very specific as regards the measurement. Eh? This one should be this cubit, this other one must be this cubit, and so on. About Jesus. About Jesus. So he expanded unto them, beginning at Moses and all the prophets, not some, all the prophets. Oh, Elijah, Elisha, Moses, apart from Moses, of course, the law. <laughs> Do you understand? Hamos, Haggai. So when you are reading the book of Malachi, for instance, Jesus is there. Because that is the entire subject of the scripture. That is the summary of the scripture. That is what the entire scripture is all about. Jesus. So he expanded unto them. The beginning of Moses and all the prophets, he expanded unto them in all scriptures the things concerning himself. <laughs> How did he know the things concerning himself? Remember that the Bible said Jesus himself learned obedience through the things that he suffered. Sometimes as a believer, the reason why you are going through certain suffering and you are going through certain season of your life is because, okay, so that when you suffer that thing, the generation after you will not suffer it. That which Christ had suffered, okay, we do not need to suffer it again. Because of his suffering, we have now come into victory. Do you get my point tonight? So we have come into victory. So in case there is someone under the sound of my voice, you say, oh, since I became born again, it has been from one level of battle to another. I've been suffering. I've been going through situations that cannot be explained. The reason why you are going through that which you are going through is because there is a generation whose liberty, whose victory, do you understand, is directly dependent on your victory. Yes, so you have to go through it. So why he needed to run through the things? No wonder why he was to be crucified. He went to the Father in John 17 and he began to pray. He said, Father, that this cup may be taken away from me. He said, but nevertheless, not my will. But I will. Why did he say, nevertheless, not my will, but I will? Because the will of the Father was for him to suffer. So that you and I do not need to go through that kind of suffering. Because man did not have the capacity or does not have the capacity to deliver himself. It's only God that can deliver man. It was a man who sinned. And so all men through the sin of Adam became sinners. Do you understand? And according to the law of the spirit in the court of heaven. Do you understand? Because there is the judgmental and the justice system of heaven. So in the justice system of heaven, what God does is that the one who sin must be the one. Alright? Who we want, who we redeem. So it was man that sinned. So man is required. To pay for the penalty of that sin. And so since no man was worthy. Because by virtue of the sin of Adam. All men. Have become what? Sinners. 
That is why David in Psalm 51 said, In sin did my mother conceive me. So, God himself became man. Why did he have to become man? So that he could do what? He could deliver. So that he could take away not just the penalty of sin, the penalty of sin, the consequences of sin also. You know, I told you last week, I said, don't allow anybody tell you that the reason why you are going through some of the things you are going through right now is because of the way you've lived your life while you were in the world. That is not biblical. Jesus did not just redeem you from sin. He redeemed you from the consequence and the penalties. So if any man be in Christ, a new creature, hold things. You may have done many abortions. Oh, it has gone. It's gone. Eh? Because you did many abortion, so you are not afraid. Ha, what if I get married? What if I'm not able to conceive? My friend, you will conceive. Hello? Because that's you who committed that abortion. Is dead. It's no longer in existence. So the Bible said, the Bible said concerning Jesus that he expanded unto them the things that were written from who? Moses to to what? So Jesus came primarily to fulfill all that is meticulously written about him. And mind you, <laughs> there are also people who were in the negative side of the prophecies. I hope you know that. Like Judas Iscariot, the Roman soldiers, eh? Herod, the guys in the synagogue, the Pharisees. All right? They, they were all part of the prophecy. Every, every individual is fulfilling his own part of the word of the prophecy. Including Judas, Iscariot. Mind, hear this. Your outcome in life is directly dependent on your ability to discover. And fulfill that which has been written concerning you. Before you were born. In Jeremiah 1.5. He said before you were formed. In your mother's womb. I knew you right. So which means. There is an essence for your living. And that essence for your living. Has been. Has been in existence. Before the foundation of the world. The reason why you are alive. The reason why that accident happened and you came out on scratch or you even came out at all. The reason why all manner of things had happened to your family members and you escaped eh, is not because that God loved you so much so that he could allow and permit others to die and spare your life. It's because there is a cause for your existence. You know, many of us will live for self. And each time you live for self, you are undermining the grace of God. The grace that the Lord has bestowed on you, are you getting me? To keep your life. A man of God said, when you live for self, you live for small. Come to you in the volume of the book that is written of me to do thy will. This is Jesus. Now, you may now be asking, <laughs> How can I live all right in accordance to the will of God? There are many of us who don't know what the will of God is for our lives. Your assignment, what you will become. And your outcome in life is enwrapped within the will of God for your life. 
The will of God for your life is not to build you a house. It's not to buy you cars. It's not to make you comfortable. So that you can be posting on social media that I also have arrived. Hello, there is a purpose, all right, for your existence. And that purpose is engrafted in the word of God. Jesus did not just fulfill all the apostrophe, comma, and the rest that are, that are written in the scripture. How was he able to discover the things that have been written about him? How? Not because he is God. Remember, the Bible said that we do not have a high priest. Eh? Who do not what? Who is not touched. So the exact things that you are going through, he also went through it because he was a man. Are you getting my point? So he was a man like you and I. So he read the way he wants you to read. He sat with scriptures the way you, he wants you to sit with scriptures. At age 12, the Bible said the mother and Joseph, the biological father, went to the synagogue. And when they got to synagogue, what happened there? Eh? he left them. They didn't know that he had left and they continued their journey. On their way, it was why they were on their way. They remember, ah, where is this young boy? For three days, they kept looking for him. And eventually, they went back to Jerusalem and found him, all right, in the midst of the teachers of the law, asking and answering questions. A 12-year-old boy asking and answering questions. I believe that each time they open to him the book of Isaiah and they are reading, we say, okay, what is that Isaiah talking about? Who was he talking about? We say, Christ. He will not sit down. So, okay, so this is part of my mission statement. All right. Uh, what is that portion of Moses, that law, talking about? They say, Christ. He will write it down. Note it. Do you understand? Okay, what, what is that portion? I heard you utter one statement from the book of Psalms. David. What was he talking about? He said, well, no wonder. At some point, some guys gathered because he said, Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it. You are not even up to 30. <laughs> and you say, Abraham rejoiced to see your day. What, are, what do you mean? And the Bible said, they gathered stone. How did he know that? He studied. So each time, you see, when it was time for him to start his ministry, how did he know that he had to go to John the Baptist to be baptized? To be baptized? He studied Isaiah. He studied. And the Bible said, and as it, that it may be fulfilled, when he was to be killed, he was taken to Egypt, right? That it may be fulfilled. When he returned back to, from Egypt, he was taken to where? To where? Nazarene. Nazareth, right? That it may be fulfilled. That it may be fulfilled. That it may be fulfilled. How did Jesus know all these things? He read. There can be no fruit without the seed. And the word is the seed. Are you getting my point? So if God is expecting you to bear fruit for him, he is in essence expecting you to study the Bible to a point where you could discover a portion of the scripture that is written concerning you. Because every man on earth, every believer in Christ has a portion of the scripture. Where something has been written concerning him. Part time. And it's your duty and responsibility to know it. You search it out. You find it out. You look for it. Are you getting my point? Discover it. You pray it in. And then you manifest it. Proverbs 25 and in verse 2. Say so it is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor.
honor of kings is to search out a matter. Hey, when you became born again, the Bible says you've been called, you've been made what? A king and priest. So, as a king in Christ, eh? kings are not mediocre. There is no king you come in contact with. One of the things that you know about them is that they are knowledgeable people. They are very knowledgeable about their community. You can't meet a king and that king will not be able to explain to you in total, all right, what really brought about that community. He will tell you this was the first person who instituted this community, right? These were the things that happened. There was full and new war. There was this social war. Then the colonial masters came in 19 so 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 or in 18 so 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 so. Do you understand? And this was instituted here. This idol, how it came about. All right? How we started making um, 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 animal sacrifices here. He will, he will be able to explain everything to you because they were men of knowledge. So also, if you have been called a king in Christ, it means that you have the responsibility to search. So it is the glory of God to conceal, to hide. But it is the honor. So your honor as a king is tied around that which you are able to do what? To find out. In the place of research. About yourself. That is why even though we are all kings in Christ, we don't have the same honor. Some are more honorable than others. <laughs> and that honor is directly dependent on that which you have been able to discover in him. About yourself. Jesus lived his life to the fullest to a point whereby everything, every jot, every comma, every apostrophe, every full stop that was written against him, he manifested them all. Not some. No, there was none, no single prophecy that was left unfulfilled. No. In Luke chapter 4, verse 18, the first time he was to open the scripture, the book of Torah, the book of Isaiah. What was it that he read? Verse 18. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel. He knew this thing was written about him. To the poor, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. The next verse, he said to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Now, let, let's hear what he now had to say further. And he closed the book. And he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. Then, what did Jesus have to say to them? And he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. So he knew that that was what was written concerning him. This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Hello? There is that which has been written concerning you that is wrapped in the scripture. Find it out. Find it out. You know, sometimes you can spend the whole year praying the wrong kind of prayers. Why the Holy Ghost is waiting for you to initiate some kind of prayers. That's why some of us, from January to we only attend prayer meetings, prayer houses. But the real thing that will bring about the manifestations of the glory of God, okay, and, and the, manifest the fulfillment of the counsel and the agenda of God for our lives. We don't pray about such things. Hear this. The man who lives at the center of the purpose of God with his life, eh, for his life, we never pray against the spirit of premature death. You know what? You can't die prematurely. Anybody who lives at, at the center of the will of God, you don't need such prayers. 
You know why we pray such prayers? Because a lot of us are not living at the center of the will of God. You just know that I can't be killed. It's not possible. I cannot. I cannot. I know what is written concerning me. I know my mission in this generation. I know God's agenda. I know what God told me. And I know the reason why he has instituted me and why he has planted me in these days and in this generation. Then it has not been fulfilled, so I'm not going anywhere. No matter who is dying around me, it is inconsequential. No matter what is killing others, it is inconsequential. Even if I enter a vehicle and the vehicle somersault eight times, I will come out alive. You know why? It's the knowledge. Not just the knowledge of who you are in Christ. Not just the knowledge of what Christ is. But the knowledge of purpose. Knowledge of purpose. So as we behold as in a glass. 2 Corinthians 3.18 It says we are transformed into the same image. From? 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 In other words, the more you see, the less, the less you look, the more you look, the less you see. What I mean is that the more you look, the less <coughs> of yourself you see, and the more of him you discover, and the more his purpose you discover for your life. It is glory to glory. Glory to glory. That business is in the word of God. Search it out. That marriage is in God's word. Search it out. Do you understand? Oh, you are going through marital turbulence. Search it out. It's there in the scripture. That is why before you embark on marital relationship, always make inquiry in the place of prayer. There is always a scripture somewhere for that marriage. When it has been discovered, do you know what happens to you? Are, no matter the turbulences, no matter the battles, no matter what the devil may bring your way, you will still stand strong in the midst of adversity because your confidence is not going to be in that, in your ability to pray. Your confidence will be in the word of God. Sometimes you can know how to pray and sometimes you can faint in the place of prayer. I hope you know that. There are certain adversities that, that challenges a man and the man will say, I know go feel pray again, no. <laughs> you want to open your eyes, you are just discouraged. Yes, sir. You are just discouraged. Something happened recently. I told my wife, and my dad called. My dad has been doing all night for more than I, I can't remember. Every day. All night. Too. Every day. Every blessing. I cannot even remember the, the last time. And he called me, he said. I woke up in the night to pray as usual. He said, I could not open my mouth. He called me in the night, in the middle of the night. I had to encourage him. Do you understand? But the man will know what is written concerning him. In the midst of adversity, his confidence will not be from the world. That which he had received. I've once shared with you before. When I was in relationship with my wife, before we got married, Right? At some point, I said, I'm not interested again. And she, she went back to the scripture that the Lord gave to her for the relationship. I said, Lord, you are the one who gave me this scripture. Eh? So, are you now telling me that it is over now? While she was praying, I was in my house and I was hearing her prayers verbatim in the spirit. And I became restless. <laughs> I called her. I said, I'm sorry. <coughs> we have to continue. It was later she told me what she did. Are you getting my point? There is that which is written. God doesn't want you to live your life in the dark. There is that which is written. Just like Jesus, the way he found it out. Go and search. This is one of the benefits that we get from studying our Bible. Oh, you just abandon the scripture of God. Or you want to read, you just read. Pastor said we should be reading our Bible. You just chap, 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 chap. You just read, oh, in the beginning of the world, the world was God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to walk. Protect me. Guide me. In Jesus' name. Amen. And you go. 
You haven't done anything. You haven't done anything. You sit down. Have a prayer time. Have a meditation time. Have a time of studying. Personally. Because it is the, in the place of prayer, study, meditation that you discover yourself. Because the more of him you know, the more of yourself you discover. Can't be on our feet. So our prayer this morning is going to be very simple. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. He said, 33 verse 3, Jeremiah. He said, call unto me. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. Not Joshua, please. Call unto me. And I will answer thee. And show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not of. There are things that you do not know about yourself. Only when you call upon him in the place of prayer and meditation that it will be revealed to you. Sometimes the reason why you are stranded is because you are not on, on, at the center of the will of God. So God is permitting that strandedness so that you can come back to your senses. And then go to him in the place of prayer of inquiry. Then he now tell you, this is the next phase of your life and this is the next thing to do. And sometimes when God is giving certain, uh, certain instructions, such instructions may not be palatable. They don't usually make sense. I tell you, when God said, when I was praying, I remember that, that afternoon, it was in the afternoon, after when I was done praying, appreciating God, I just, ent I was entering the kitchen and the Holy Ghost said to me, go and get married now. Uh -uh. How can you tell a man who does not have a job to go and get married now? Go and get married now. That was the use. Say, that's the next phase of your life. Next phase, marriage. I called my wife. We are getting married now. I said, the Holy Ghost said we should get married now. She said, ah, since it is the Lord who, that I've said it, no problem. And we got married. And I, I later got to understand the reason why I said, go and get married now. Because sometimes, eh, <laughs> what you are chasing eh, is just waiting there. It's waiting for you right there. It will be handed over to you at the platter of gold. The reason why you keep chasing it is because you are yet to discover something in the Bible that is written concerning you for this season. He said, call unto me and I will answer you. And I will tell you marvelous and wondrous things that you could never figure out on your own. There are things that you can't figure out on your own. There are things that you can't figure out on your own about your family. About your own life, there are things that you cannot figure out on your own. There are things that you cannot figure out on your own about your marriage. There are things that you cannot figure out on your own. Sit down with the world in the place of prayer of inquiry. God will unveil that revelation to you. The light will surge and everything will be opened up. Call on to me. Ask me and I will tell you remarkable secrets. I love this. You do not know about things to come. About things to come. I can never be caught on a way. Do you know why? I'm always at the center of his will. I can never be caught on a way because I'm always at the center of his will. I can never be caught on a way because I'm always at the center of his will. There are things you don't know about yourself. Now I want you to open your mouth. And you are going to talk to God. Lord, that which I know not concerning me. Open my eyes to see it. Open my eyes to see it. This is how to read the Bible. When you open, when you, when you, when you, you know, you lay hold on your Bible and you want to start reading. Pray this kind of prayers. 
and as you open your Bible, you discover that the Bible, the scriptures will be opened back onto you. And then you begin to see yourself. And God will begin to direct you, telling you what to do per time and what he wants you to do per time. Go ahead and talk to God. Lord, that which I know not concerning me, Lord, open my eyes to see it. That which I know not concerning that which, you are, which you will have me to do, which you will have me do, open my eyes to see it. That which I know not concerning my marriage, open my eyes to see it. That which I know not concerning my business, open my eyes to see it. Can you open your mouth and begin to pray tonight? Pray this morning. From today, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray for you. No more confusions in your life. No more confusions in your life. No more confusions in your life. I decree and declare everyone under the sound of my voice on this resurrection morning in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth from today 
May you live at the center of God's will for your life. To meditate. Yes. In the name of Jesus. May the blueprints for your life be revealed to you. May the blueprint for your life be revealed to you. May the blueprint for your life be revealed unto you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Whatever it is that you've been pursuing in that too. That I've been lingering by the power in the name of Jesus. This season, I command it to be delivered into your hands. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you all the praise. Lift your hands to heaven. Begin to thank him. Begin to thank him. Go ahead and thank him. Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank him. Give him praise. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we celebrate our dear man of God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's have a seat. Do well to listen to this message over and over again. The message will be available on our Telegram channel at Elisha Oyelade, as well as other messages. Do well to join the channel, download these messages, listen to them over and over again until they become part of you. Until they become part of you. Hallelujah. Let's package our offerings, our tithes, and our seats this morning. We have been taught that whatever we give to God, all our givings are done in faith. In faith. Thank you, Father, for the privilege to give unto you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's listen to the following announcement. Service holds every Sunday like today by 9 a.m. And on Tuesdays, we have our midweek service by 6 p.m. Yes, it has been um, a wonderful experience so far. So Tuesdays, 6 p.m. and Sundays, 9 a.m. on the dot. And every second Friday of the month is our night of prayer and prophecy. And for April edition to be on the 12th of April. And it's going to be powerful. It's going to be awesome. Make plans to be around for that program. Invite family and friends. Even those that are not in Abuja, ask them to connect online. 10 p.m., we are going to be here live and direct, praising, praying, and prophesying. So do well to be. God has packaged something specially for you for that program. Don't miss out. Also, join, follow us on all social media platforms. We are on all social media platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Telegram, TikTok, Instagram, and the rest. At 12 Stone CC, 12 Stone CC. Also follow our man of God at Elisha Oyela Day. You will be mightily blessed. On our social media platforms, we drop updates of our activities, our programs, and the rest. Also join our Telegram channel. I've said that already at Elisha Oyela Day. Hallelujah. With a clap innovation, can we welcome our man of God? Amen. Hallelujah. Can we celebrate Jesus one more time? Can we celebrate Jesus one more time? God's people. Praise God. Um, today is Easter. One more time. Praise the Lord. So, which means um, we are in a season of celebration. Praise God. Um, next week, Friday, right? 12th of April. Huh? In two weeks' time. Okay. In two weeks' time, we are going to be having night of prayer and prophecy. Yes, night of prayer. Can we celebrate the Lord for that? And you know, every night of prayer and prophecy is always mind-blowing. Do I have a witness there? Yes, we are going to pray and we are going to prophesy. There are only two things we do that night. Pray prayers. I minister in the prophetic. 
from night till dawn. Whatever be your situation or challenge, just come. If you have anybody who is bedridden, who is sick, who is afflicted, who had medical condition, you know it was on this mountain, someone was healed of a liver condition that was supposed to cost them 500 million naira to treat in the US. He instantly healed on this mountain. And several others, several others, do you understand? On this same mountain. So, invite, if somebody tells you he has cancer, he has tumor, he has growth, he has this, he cannot work. It was on this same mountain, ovariances was healed, right? <laughs> and all those hormonal enlisted stuff, healed, she's here, by the power of God. Are you getting my point? And so, on this mountain, bring anyone who is afflicted, bring anybody who, who desires specific direction from God, alright, for his or her life. Night of prayer and prophecy is always that nice. I always come as a prophet, in my full regalia as a prophet. Praise the Lord. And that is exactly what will be happening in the April edition. And that April edition is not just me alone. My prophet friend will be here with us. <laughs> I tell you, he's a prophet of God doing mighty works for Jesus. He's a prophet of God doing mighty works. I don't have charlatan as friends. Never. I don't have charlatan. You know, you know what I mean by charlatan? I do not have one single charlatan as a friend in my corner. Do you get my point? And neither do I condone anyone who is a charlatan. Say, well, we are in the same body of... No, they are not member of the body of Christ. Too. In case you see a charlatan and somebody is saying, uh, you know, let you know, we are not members of the same what? Body. Okay, so I do not have any single charlatan as a friend. Do you get my point? Uh, so, I'm only, I went somewhere um, some time ago and I saw a friend. Having a, I told a friend, I said, this one, is a charlatan. He said, I said, ah, if you don't cut away from him, I will cut away from you. He's a charlatan. I, I don't want to have anything to do with him. Praise the Lord. So my friend will become, he's a prophet of God, sent from heaven. The Holy Ghost specifically instructed me that we bring him to join force with me. And remember that April is my birthday, right? So he's coming to join force with me. And I'll, I'm, we are going to be launching you into a new season, yes, of your life. Praise the Lord. And the Lord will be doing amazing things in our lives, in the name of Jesus Christ. Can we be on our feet this morning? If you are fellowshipping with us for the first time, we'd like to welcome you. We love you. Oh, wow. Can you God you bless you, you and keep you. Let's welcome them. Let's make, make his welcome face them. shine upon Let's you. Let's welcome them. Be gracious to you. Let's make God turn his wow. awesome. face towards awesome. you. Welcome them. And be so. I should tell you and your wife alright that because I saw both of you praying together there is a major expectation that has been delayed God said because you are here this morning that the answer that you seek has been delivered to you Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ Amen. you've been asking yourself what, what can I do is there anything I need to do? Whatever it is, I'm ready to do it. The Lord is saying, as you tell you, sir, that you don't need anything. You don't need to do anything. Okay? Yes. That it has been sorted in the realm of the spirit. Amen. And because it has been sorted, it will become a physical reality. Amen. It will become tangible. Amen. In the name of Jesus. 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 I don't know the kind of car that you drive right now, but I see a minibus. You know a minibus? Yes. 
like like a Sienna, you know, this Sienna bus, a mini bus, something like that. That's what I saw in the realm of the spirit. Amen. And God is saying, very shortly, very shortly, very, very shortly, very, very shortly, before we get to the third quarter of the year, I see that, I see the Lord delivering that into your hands. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. There are a lot of questions. But specifically because of this project. Eh? Because of this project. Because you know that there is so much money that you are going to get. You are going to realize if only this project is actualized. And there is somebody that is supposed to sign a document that we make them to award the project to you. This is like a contract, right? But God is saying because you are here, sir, it is done. Amen. It is done. Amen. That man who is a politician... <laughs> He will not be able to rest <laughs> until he does the needful. Amen. Can we celebrate Jesus for this family? Can we celebrate Jesus? You are not, see, let me tell you, sir. Not only will you be able to pay your house rent supernaturally, but God is, will build you a house. Amen. All right? He will build you a house. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Can we lift our hands to heaven, please? Um, this is Trefstone Church. All right. Trefstone. Of course, it was necessary. That was why I ministered to him. Okay. All right. This is Trefstone Church. Um, and, um, we are a people called to raise a people who, through precise and accurate knowledge of their all right, um, identity in Christ, supernatural identity in Christ, we expect expand and extend the frontier of God's kingdom. As you join us in this house, one thing is sure, you can't be part of this house for three months and your life remain the same. It's impossible. It's not possible. You can't be here for three consecutive months and your life will not completely transform. Praise the Lord. So as you join us, I believe you enjoyed the service this morning. Did you? Did you enjoy yourself this morning? Right? Wow. So that man of God over there, We'll be attending to you briefly, just for two minutes. It's not going to take your time, okay? We'll be attending to you briefly, and as you do so, the Lord will continue to bless you in the name of Jesus. As you go this week, may the Lord continue to go with you. Amen. Your hand will not be empty. Amen. Nothing shall be difficult for you anymore. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever you lay your hands upon shall prosper. Amen. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Amen. Every tongue that will rise against you in judgment this week, I hereby condemn it. In the name of Jesus. This week, the Lord will put testimonies in your mouth. You will not die. You will not die. You will not die. Every expectation of the wicked over your life and family is hereby torn against them. In the mighty name of Jesus. Whosoever that have been appointed to die around you, I stand on Psalm 79 verse 11. I command it to be reversed. I command it to be reversed. I command it to be reversed. In the name of Jesus, it is done. It is well with you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. The grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Rest and abide with us now forevermore. Amen. Surely. All the days of our lives. And we are the house of the Lord. Forever and ever. Amen. Bounty and splendor. Ah, bounty and splendor. Bounty and splendor. I am bigging millions. I am big in millions. Amen. Have a wonderful Easter celebration.